we're back with a jar of fireflies and you'll love this one but it's so quick so if you blink you'll miss it come and join us it's a half an hour and you'll have lots of fun We're only going to use the one brush today, this brush and maybe one smaller one, but I want to get used to, I want you to get used to the point of the brush, using the very, very tip and doing just very, very light strokes. A lot of people press too hard and then you get too big a stroke and too heavy paint, but use a little bit of paint and the tip of the brush, it'll give you much more um, control. The jar we want in this section of the canvas. So. I'm going to load this brush up, just brush it off, wash it off, and then um, dry it. Load it up with white only, just on the tip, so that you still have a bit of a point. Okay? Okay. And then I want my jar to be around this area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint a line like that down one side. Right. That's probably about as much of my jar as I want to see on the one side. And then the width of the jar is going to be about that far. My jar is facing slightly to the left. So the line on the left-hand side will be at the same angle as this and at a right angle to it as well across the bottom there. Okay. The bottom of the jar now is curved. It's lying in the grass. So I'm going to make a white, using a quite a thick brush stroke, a white curve underneath, okay. like that. And then fill this area in, leaving quite a curve in the middle here, with white, like that. And it does not have to be perfect. Mine Definitely don't keep it perfect because this jar has got shine on it from the light that's inside. I'm going to make sure that that is 100% white, so I'm going to cover it up again with some more white. Like that. And it's bitty across the bottom as well. You don't have to have it perfect. It's lying in the grass. So it will be covered by shadow in the grass anyway. The top of the jar now, with the very tip of your brush, still in white, I'm leaving a bit of a gap here, it's in shadow there, but the top of the jar comes in from the left hand side, it curves in and then goes almost straight and then the same curve joins in that side there. So you've got two little curves on either side of the jar like that. And they've got to be equal curves. I'm going to fill a little bit of white in there as well. Just bring it down a little bit so it's a corresponding white blob in this jar. And then take it around to meet that side of the jar. In fact, you can actually join the jar up on that side. Like, you know what, this okay. jar is a little bit high for me, so I'm going to make mine a little bit deeper in the picture. So it's slightly deeper jar, adding a little bit more to the bottom, like that. And if you look closely at this, you can still see a little bit of the black paint through it. Yeah. And you can see there's bits and pieces around the edge. It's not a perfect perfectly smooth. You can go back and make it perfectly smooth if you want that at a later stage. The top of the jar. If you use the tip of your brush, plain white again, if you use the tip of your brush, leave a black gap between what you have done at the top of the brush here, at the top of the jar here, which is that straight piece, almost straight piece there. And I want to put a line 
using quite a thick stroke like that so you press it's very light you press a little bit more in the middle and then you lift your brush up towards the end okay and leaving a bit of a gap between that one and the next one a little um, black gap I'm going to do exactly the same at exactly the same angle and the same um, pressure on the brush so it's using the tip of the brush press a little bit deeper and then raise your brush up I'm making a very thin line from the top left hand corner down onto the jar on the right hand side like that and I think I'll do one for the next one as well just a thin line thin white line mm -hmm. we're going to go to yellow now and I'm going to leave a white gap here in the middle of the jar across the bottom here and I'm going to go around that white gap with some yellow just put some yellow in around the edge like that carrying on with the yellow I'm going to make yellow go right up to the edge of the jar like that Don't paint too much because what happens is uh, the more water you put on here the more black will show through use quite thick paint without too much water and you'll get and you have to blob the paint on like so I've widened the yellow a bit there I'm going to put a little bit of yellow here in the middle of the top of the jar here And a little bit in the, this top line here, and a little bit in that line there. Next, we're going to add some orange, which is I'm going to mix a tiny little bit of red in my yellow palette section. Mix an orange. Mm -hmm. And you can see it takes very little red to make a nice orange, mm -hmm. lots more yellow. When you've got a nice orange, I'm going to add some orange around the edge of the yellow here, still leaving some yellow, showing some yellow. So I'm I'm dabbing the orange around in this area around the edge of the yellow. Dab a bit of orange there. Okay. I'm going to dab a little bit on the right hand side of this. Of this yellow here as well there and a little bit here coming down a little bit of orange there there I'm going to add some red now don't go right to the edge of the glass area so leave a white line on the outside edge but I'm going to dab the red in this space here at the edge of the orange like that And then again, corresponding on this side, a little bit of red on the outside of the orange on this side. Just dabbing it so you can still see some of the orange in. Do not go right to the edge of the glass. We need to see the white on the end of the glass. I've literally dabbed color on there. And I'm going to do the same for my pale blue. Making a pale blue, I'm going to take this blue, tiny touch of the blue, into the mixing area, and a lot of white because I want a pale blue there we go it's quite a nice pale blue there so add some pale blue that side a little bit on this side dab some on either side of your yellow and orange same on the next one down dab a little bit pale blue there pale blue there into that white section and then pale blue in the left hand side of the jar here make sure that you leave white around the edge and dab that all the way up to the yellow i'm going to dab some on the right hand side as well leaving some white around the edge of my jar and the next is pale green but the pale green i'm going to use a, more of a lime color green so it's adding a little bit of green quite a bit of yellow to get myself a nice lime color green you can see I'm using very very little paint here and then I'm going to add some white to that 
They have a nice pale limey green. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm going to use a little bit of that lime green in between the yellow and the blue on the left hand side here. I'm just going to dab some lime green into that area there. Perhaps a little bit of lime green into this blue area here, but not covering all of the blue, just a little bit of the blue green in there. I'm going to put one or two little blobs of green into this spot across the top here as well. With a lot of water on my brush, I'm going to pick up some of that pale blue. This is more of a watery color now, very much watercolor. And I'm going to add a few strokes of that pale watercolor blue in this black section here, just a little bit. So you'll see a lot more black underneath there. The grass, using the tip of your brush and the pale blue that you've made, I'm going to make a little bit more pale blue because I've used mine up with the water. The grass, we're going to start from this side of the canvas and we're going to put a little bit right there, put a few little, little pieces of grass there with lots of black showing in between. And you're going to have your grass going in different directions. So they're just little strokes of pale blue. A few more bigger strokes on the left hand side there because the grass is bigger on the left. And if now that we, it's going that way. There, can you see that? Yep. There's quite a lot of black showing there. I'm going to put a few more, you can see a little bit better if I hold it up. So I'm going to put a few more um, blue pieces of grass coming down towards my jar, maybe a few in front as well like that. There's a lot of light on the grass right here where, it, where the jar is sitting. And then I'm going to do a few on the right hand side as well, going the other way. Just a few little flicks of grass going that way. Maybe one or two down there as well. Just a few flicks here. Not a lot. You don't need a lot to make a huge difference to this picture. Okay. So I'm going to load my brush up with pale green and I'm going to make this a just a mixture of a couple of greens. I'm going to make mine a little bit darker than it was in the jar. And I'm going to put a few more lines of pale green. Some small ones here. But more towards the front of the jar here. Because you're going to see that this is where the, the, the um, candle inside this jar is shining. So a few bits of pale green here as well. But as I say, less is more, so don't do too much. I think I've probably got enough there to show that the candle's shining on my grass. I'm going to use some watery blue again. Small drops of watery blue. Here. This is our fireflies now. My fireflies are going all, you can't see it there. My fireflies are going all over the place. So, but they are coming out of the jar. And because it's watery, it'll, it'll, when it dries, it'll be very light. I'm going to do the same with the green. Put a few little blobs of watery green. My fireflies are coming out, going down and flying up. So they're not like a stream coming from here. They're all over the place. I'm going to put some watery yellow blobs there as well. Whoop. And you can see if you put, if there's too much on there, just take it off with a piece of cloth. Some watery blobs of yellow. And the reason why we're doing them very watery is because we need that blur 
And we need them to look a little bit like they're blurring away in the light. Because when this is dry, we'll add some white to that. You can have a few light red ones as well, watery orange ones. We've got orange. Let's make a few watery orange ones closer to the jar, I think. As they're going further away, they're, they're more blue and green. Like that. That's quite a lot of fireflies I've got in mind. Can you see that? With that thin brush, I'm going to load some black onto that, just on the tip of the brush, because I still have a quite a nice tip. You can just see that there. That pointy tip. Now, mm -hmm. this corner here needs to look like it's lying in the grass. So what I'm going to do is concentrate on this left-hand corner here, and I'm going to put some grass back into, it's flicking some black grass back into my jar over that corner there. And the grass, again, is going in all different directions. So it's going to be some tall. doesn't matter if you get little bits in the grass here because it looks like grass anyway. So I've concentrated on that section there and I've put a few flicks of black grass back into that corner. I'm going to do a few over the right-hand corner as well. So flick a few pieces of grass back into the glass. And you can go across the middle as well. And less is more again, so you don't need a lot. Just to show that this glass is sitting in the grass. As long as you've, because you've made this uneven edge across the bottom anyway. So that lends itself to looking like it's in the grass, sitting in the grass. I'm going to do one or, few, one or two across the middle here. Like that. And maybe there's a broken piece of grass there, so there's something that's bent. Like that. Across that angle. I'm going to add a bit of shadow back into the top section of the glass as well. We've lost a bit of shadow there, so I want a bit of black in this section here, just a little bit in that top section there, that's following the line of the glass as part of the reflection that's come back into the glass. And I'm going to put a jagged black line from this section here a broken black line that grows up to the top of the glass like that I can put a little bit of a black line in this top of the jar as well but whatever you do in the top whatever you do in these two sections at the top of the glass you've got to do in both of them exactly the same because that's a reflection I'm going to carry on using this brush because it seems to be a little bit easier to use to get these blobs of color inside the glass. We've got fireflies inside this glass. So now I'm going to put some watery blobs of yellow inside the glass. One or two. Inside that black area. Last thing I'm going to do is add some white highlights in the grass. Okay. And then start putting some white in my fireflies white and strong yellow. In the grass, I want to have a few highlights, and I'm using the thin brush again, just a little bit of white, and I'm going to flick a few highlights of grass around the edge of the glass there, in white only. Really just a few, you don't need lots. And a few on the this side as well, just flick a few, going from top, bottom to top, few little white highlights in this section here. As I said, you don't need a lot. Some small ones behind here too. And then I'm going to take some white and on these watery blobs that I've got here, I'm just going to dot a few of them with white. 
not a watery white, proper white. Nice white blob. Some, maybe one or two in the middle of the jar as well. Not all of them. One, two here on the top of these watery blobs. The ones that have dried. Like that. And maybe some yellow. Wash the brush off. Get some yellow. And some of these will have yellow on top of them. Not many, and I'm done. That's my picture done.